ok so we're at the shop and we're gonna turn that down to nothing with that tool and this control let's, so let's go I was working on a part for a fuel injection for car engines. Basically what I was doing is I was learning G12.1, which is polar interpolation. I'd never done it before. But the problem was, was that this code was so long and I had to alter it because I didn't know how to actually program something like this back then. So I was doing a lot of posting out in Mastercam, edit the X and Ys to X and Cs. And it was taking too long to put it into my program and take it in and out of the machine over and over because back then we used RS-232, which if you know what RS-232 is, you know why you want to avoid using that at all costs. It is terrible. It is super slow. So to save time, I used a sub program. Basically what I did is I came in, I rough grooved behind the head of this part right before I came in and did the milling profile, right? It had a 10 inch chuck in it. It was like 30 horsepower, huge turret, 16 stations. And this machine was a big machine. I mean, there's a lot of mass in there moving around. I put my sub program call in there and my sub program calls, but I didn't do any safe indexing home. So immediately this thing indexes into the spindle and just bang! And that is a sound I never want to hear again. A sound I do want to hear, however, is the sound of you hitting that notification bell after you subscribe to our channel. Guys, we're almost at half a million subscribers here at Titans of CNC, and you could be the one to get us there. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I'll wait. All right, that's enough, Wayne. Let's get back to the story. I had obliterated his machine so bad that it broke three Z-axis live tool holders, which are five grand a piece, so it's $15,000 gone. And I mean, before you say, you might be able to put these back together. If I had pictures, it would be a pretty big uh, internet machine meme fail because it was, uh, it was really bad. It broke the Y-axis belt because this is a hard hardened old quest. So the Y-axis was actually a belt driven. It was a belt to a ball screw to a motor. A motor to a belt to a ball screw is how it worked. And I snapped that belt. I destroyed the bearings in the spindle. Now that might not seem like the end of the world, but you have to remember this was a super precision hard hardened quest. This was actually a really nice machine. My dad comes out and you know, he was disappointed. He had a guy from Star come in and show me how to realign the turret on the Star. And after that, it was my job to realign the turret, the sub spindle. And this time it was like that, but it was a lot, lot worse because the entire spindle had to come out of this machine. My dad was, you know, this time around, he actually had a service tech come out and take the spindle out. I watched the guy take it out and I told my dad, I was like, yeah, you know, when we get the spindle back, I think I could put it back in. And he says, no, you are going to do this. And I don't care how you feel about it. So we send the spindle out. Hard and is gonna take about six months to fix. It was a super precision spindle. It wasn't exactly simple. I mean, it was a extremely high precision spindle. So they said it's gonna be six months. We send it out. They're gonna send it back six months. We'll be able to put it back in, all right? Six months goes by and every single day I walk by this machine, I have to see a machine with a giant hole in the head wall because there's no spindle in there anymore. It wasn't usable for anything. It was a bar fed machine. So what are you, what are you gonna do? You know, that, that kind of bothers me, right? Because like that spindle turning, that's what brings in my dad's shop money, right? And that money's not just for me and my dad and my family to live our lives, but there were people there who had multiple kids and it mattered to me that they got paid, obviously. I mean, you, you know, you get to know these people, you get to know their families. You know, the thought of not being able to provide a check for them is kind of scary. So when this lathe was down, it was one out of four of our production lathes. So without this lathe, we were at 75% capacity at our best. That's with everything going to plan. Ooh, check this out. Check this out. You gotta like this. I don't know when it's coming. See, I don't even have to work. I can just sit here and talk into a camera and we keep printing money. Don't you love it? It's awesome. As long as you get these things set up right, the sky is the limit. So my dad's shop, like I was talking about, we had four machines like this. Four machines are multitasking lathes that had bar feeders on them. We had two big turret lathes and two stars. And yeah, having one of them down was pretty, it was a pretty big hit in, you know, our ability to produce parts. We had other ways. We had screw machines, you know, we had Fidel's, we had a couple of small hard hardened CHNCs. Six months has passed. We finally get the spindle back. I immediately took it off the crate and started putting it in. And I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, this is like embarrassing. So any service tech watching this will probably laugh at me right away. I actually tightened the belts on the spindle. The spindle was up here and the motor was down here with the belts pulling down. Show you how little I knew about doing this, I actually tightened all that up before trying to align it. It took me a few hours to realize how dumb my process was before I realized, hey, every time I tighten this thing down, it's pulling back up against those belts. Just little things like that. Yeah, it's a really hard thing to learn on your own. So this night I was actually lucky because there was a guy who was at my dad's shop and he actually helped me put it back in and he was pretty cool. He, uh, his name was Joe. He actually stayed there until two in the morning with me that night. We stayed till two in the morning. There was a lot of challenges to getting it fixed. The way that spindle sat, I won't get too into details here, but the spindle was, it sat on a platform that was parallel to the ground and the X axis was 45 degrees to the ground. So you had to find this like sweet spot on center with the sub spindle and the Y axis at the intersection point to get it perfect and straight. So yeah, once we got it in, we pretty much, you know, we tightened everything down, checked it. I put a part in there that was four inches in diameter, 10 inches long. 
took a nice slow cut in the in the hand wheel and it was actually straight within two tenths. I was pretty impressed. I was pretty impressed that extremely quick trial and error, I could actually rebuild this spindle and get the machine back up and running so we could get back on with our lives, continue on. I'm really kind of grateful now that I'm older and everything's paid off for me. I mean, working at Titans here, I mean, as you can see, I'm in this shop, the best shop in the whole world, the best team in the whole world, just telling a story into a camera, you know? I'm lucky, I'm really lucky, and the work ethic that I needed to get me to this point was 100% instilled to me through my dad's shop, through these types of stories, all the mistakes I made, all the things I learned the hard way that just kind of made me who I am today. My dad, when I made a mistake, would make me fix it. It wasn't, oh no, go do something else. It was, wait, you broke the star? Well, you know how to align that turret, so guess what you're doing tonight? And he wouldn't say it like that in like a mean way or anything. I just knew. I just knew that like I had to do it because if I didn't, I'd let him down. I'd let the business down. Uh, you know, I'd let my coworkers down. It, it just, I had to fix this machine. So it was ingrained in me. I mean, the first machine I worked on after my dad's shop was a Miano. I'd never seen one before. But the first day I got that job, I took that manual home. I read it. I studied it in and out. I put sticky notes on the pages I knew would be important and I mastered that machine. When the guy came in to that shop the next day from Dynamic, he told me by far, hands down, he had never seen anyone else put that much effort into learning this. He's never seen anybody, you know, that prepared to be trained. What's crazy about that is, is one year later when I quit that job, he actually called me. He got me my next job at Dynamic Machine of Detroit. And that's where my skills were really able to go to the next level because with that attitude, with that hard work drive, I read every single manual for every single machine. I did not stop at any point to take my skills to the furthest level I can get them to. And this all goes back to what my dad showed me in his shop. He just showed me to, to, to work hard and to, and if you put your mind to something, you can really do it. And, and, that, and that's insane, because you know you hear these happy-go-lucky sayings like, oh, if you put your mind to it, you know, you can achieve anything. And people tell you that your whole life. It, it sounds so lame and corny, but when you actually experience it and do it yourself and take your career to the next level, it's insane what you can achieve. And it's an unbelievably awesome feeling. Here's a question. Have you asked yourself what you're getting for Christmas yet or what you're getting someone else for Christmas yet? Well, here's an idea. You can go on titansofcnctooling.com right now and get yourself a Dodeca shell mill with 10 inserts that can cut pretty much any material you can name of for just $250. I mean, what a steal, right? It's such a good deal, actually. I think I'm gonna get my mom one for Christmas. And it's not that my mom needs a shell mill for Christmas. It's that everything I or you buy off our store helps go to support free education for the manufacturing industry. It helps support things like CNC Expert, a free website you could go onto right now and find different manufacturers, engineers, machinists, you name it, across the whole world. We've already given out 2,000 certifications and CNC Expert started for free. Titans of CNC is bringing you away to find good machinists, to find good engineers, to find whatever you need for your company. So for managers, business owners, whoever you are, get on CNC Expert and check it out. I mean, how crazy is that? I'm a machinist, and now I'm working at Titans of CNC talking into a camera. Speaking of crashing machines, hi, Barry, how are you? I'm doing fabulous, Donnie. Yeah. Fun over there in fairy dust land. I am, I am. This is what I was talking about on the camera. I get to work with the best team in the world, yes. right? Look we at- We support each other in everything. In everything at all times. Including the creation of glitter. Every time. You're recording right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm recording right now. You can be in. I'm not the cat. I'm just the camera guy. Hi. Did you get that text from Titan? Sorry, Titan. Please don't fire me. No, I'm going to stop recording. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that was a little insightful. I mean, I hope I wasn't too preachy. I really hope that was, you know, kind of a crazy story for you. Me fixing my dad's machines, me uh, in the thick of it, you know. I think manufacturers like that, that, oh, I've been doing this for 40 years and I broke every knuckle doing that. Da, 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 da. If you want more of me telling stories of my dad's shop and the whole stupid things I did as a kid, please comment below and let Titan know that you want to hear some more good old stories with Donnie. If you haven't already, hit like, hit subscribe, and also ring that notifications bell so you can keep getting notifications for videos like this.